Hey, Tiger fans, Lawton Swan, Clemson Sports Talk. Welcome into another exclusive interview. This time we sit down with Clemson's new baseball coach, Eric Backage. It is the show that shakes the South Lake Clemson Sports Talk on a Tuesday afternoon, and we are excited to be joined by Clemson's head baseball coach, Eric Backage. Coach, welcome in. Congratulations. And I, I know Tiger faithful across the state of South Carolina and around the world are excited to hear about your experiences in baseball today on the program. Well, thanks for having me, Lawton, and always excited to talk Clemson baseball. So, so dive into us a little bit. When did you begin to love baseball? Give us some background for people that maybe don't know that about you. Not necessarily your coaching days uh, at Michigan or at Maryland, but the young Eric Backich. When did you fall in love with baseball? Oh, man. Well, you know, I was one of those kids growing up. My favorite sport was whatever sport I was playing at the season. But I think as I got in more into Little League around – 10, 11, 12 years old, I, you know, started to talk in a different way about baseball. Like that was, you know, that was my favorite sport and that was the sport I wanted to, you know, really, really love the most. Um, but it's, it's in the blood. It's just, you know, I knew even when <clears throat> I figured out really quickly after college, I, I wasn't good enough to, you know, to play in the big leagues. And, uh, I just knew I, I had to stay connected to baseball in some way, shape or form. And, very, very lucky to start a coaching career at such a young age with such a tremendous staff and group of mentors. And then, of course, you spent a lot of time at Vanderbilt with Coach Tim Corbin. And you mentioned during your, your press conference with he and Jack Leggett and others have, you know, kind of had that influence on your career. You know, when, when you look at the totality of what it means to be a baseball coach in 2022, what, I mean, what is that for you? Well, I've said this before. I feel very fortunate to only be a part of the Jack Leggett coaching tree. and His tree has a lot of branches, but one of the best moves I could have made was leaving California and going out to East Carolina. And I just heard something different from, from the head coach at East Carolina, Keith LeClaire. And what I didn't know at the time was that Keith LeClaire had played for Coach Leggett at Western Carolina and coached with Coach Leggett at Western Carolina, uh, but that was that was the connection to the Coach Leggett coaching tree at the time. And then when he Coach LeClaire basically called in a favor to Coach Leggett to put in a good word to be the volunteer coach in 2002, it was just like these light bulbs going off of just seeing the other side. You know, if I had the player's perspective, but then to see the coach's perspective of that coaching tree and make those connections and connect those dots with Keith LeClaire's program at East Carolina as a player to uh, Coach Leggett at Clemson. And then obviously uh, with Tim Corbin and Kevin O'Sullivan and myself sharing an office that just accelerated the learning curve. And then, and then Coach Corbin allowing me to go with him and be his recruiting coordinator at Vanderbilt and build something special. So it's, it's only been that tree and uh, mm. coaching baseball in 2022. There's a lot of different ways to do it. You know, some people roll the balls out there and just play recruit good players and just, just play. Uh, but the, the Jack Leggett coaching tree, coach Corbin, Keith LeClaire, uh, it's just a tremendous attention to detail, fundamentally sound, instilling character values, toughness, being aggressive, discipline. Uh, but more importantly, it's just the care level of the human being and developing the total person, not just the baseball player, but the future husband, the future father, the future community leader, and building that within the program and integrating our family and our children, Jiffy, my kids, uh, what Tim and Maggie did, what, what Coach Leggett did with Karen and his kids, Tanner and Colby, it's just, you just knew the whole family and they were around and it was, it was really, really special. Uh, and I saw it, I saw it at East Carolina with Coach LeClaire's like went Lynn and his kids, JD and Audrey, and it's just continued it uh, with Jiffy and our three kids where it's just one big family and it's treated as such. Coach Eric Package here with us on the program today talking about 
uh, his experiences in baseball. So, Coach, I'm sure a lot of travel between Ann Arbor and Clemson back and forth recently. But, you know, have you had a chance to kind of sit down? And what is it like? Is it film study? I mean, how do you learn more about the roster that you've already got? I know I've seen some players from Michigan that are making their way down as well. But, you know, what has it been like for you to kind of maneuver through all of the film in preparation for this coming season as Clemson's head coach? Well, it's a, a lot of dialogue, a lot of conversations with um, everyone from our administration. You know, the former coaching staff has been awesome. They've been super helpful, and I've, I'm, I continue to be, you know, incredibly appreciative for their help in transitioning. Um, watching video, like you said, uh, but just it's just get it's just gathering information to do a true needs assessment, and that's really. The first, the first week and a half has been just creating that needs assessment and what are the priorities in the, in the first couple of weeks. And it's trying to, you know, you're really trying to do everything. You're trying to return every single text message and every single phone call and connect with every single former Clemson baseball player while hiring a coaching staff, while getting in touch with <laughs> not just the, the current team, but the recruits in the pipeline and figuring out the transfer portal. I mean, it is, it is a lot. So uh, I'm, you know, I felt like the first few days I was like, oh my God, I'm totally underwater. I can't get my text messages under 300. I send one and two more come in. And, um, but I think, I think we're, we're making our way to more sturdy ground now, Lawton. We're, we're getting there. We're not quite there yet, but we're getting there for sure. Uh, but it has been a whirlwind in the most awesome way possible. Not to mention helping some of the freshmen move in. How's the back today? I mean, did you have to do any heavy lifting? You know, they uh, we did a little heavy lifting, but it's, the <laughs> back's not sore. But we did get our steps in for the month. We're we're good on uh, for all those people who track their steps. Uh, we we got a month's worth of steps in uh, on move-in day with the freshmen. It was great though. It uh, they're on like the third floor to the sixth floor, and by the end of the day, we we're just taking the elevator up to the sixth floor. <laughs> <laughs> Eric back at Clemson baseball coach hanging out with us here today. We talked with Clemson University Director of Athletics Graham Neff. Uh, early, I guess it was Tuesday last week, about a week ago, just to kind of talk about the the whole situation. And, and and the thing, you know, as a guy that covers all the sports with our show, one of the things that that I'm constantly focused on, you know, is the scholarship limits with baseball. I understand why they exist. I know it was 13 back in 1990, and it was a 10% reduction. That's why you're at the 11.7. Um, NIL is certainly a, a, a part, Coach, of I think the future of maybe helping uh, offset some of the costs for parents. But in, in your time at Michigan, Maryland, and, and now at Clemson, I mean, what have you been able to do specifically? And what do you think the future is in terms of, I don't know if it's leveling the playing field, so to speak, for college baseball players to get them into schools like Clemson? Um, you know, what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are very, very simple. You know, I'm, I'm, I understand the pay for play and there's some, some deals being made where, where student athletes are making a lot, a lot of money and, and that's wonderful. Good for them. I think for college baseball, the, my thoughts in, in subsidizing the 11 seven and helping players out is to eliminate the cost of attendance. It's not as much as it is trying to pay players an exorbitant amount of money as to more is just eliminate their expenses, eliminate the bills. The college baseball forever and ever has been a student loan sport where guys are walking out of college as college baseball players with a high level of, of debt. And I think if we can bridge that gap to where that's no longer taking place and, and they can almost become a headcount sport uh, where they yeah. have just the cost of attendance covered, that would be, that would be fantastic. And then if it's a, the NIL it becomes a meritocracy of you know pay you know good the the really really high level players are being compensated because of some uh, deals that they can negotiate on their behalf then then great but I, this is where I think Graham Neff has been uh, an incredible leader because he has looked at all different avenues to help us stretch those eleven seven that are eleven seven scholarships whether it be NIL and the buckets that we're finalizing and uh, to create those opportunities for our players to bringing back academic common market to approving the Alston money to be available for scholarship student athletes to 
finding creative ways through summer school to help uh, to help players financially uh, make progress towards their degree and, and Clemson be able to cover it. So I think when you put all of those together, you have some creative solutions to really eliminate that cost of attendance for our players. Clemson baseball coach Eric Backich here on the show that shakes the Southland talking about the 11.7 scholarship limits and the uh, ways to maybe in the future work around some of those. And so, you know, I, I think too, coach, the other part of what you've done during your career, especially at Michigan, that maybe the casual observer of college baseball doesn't understand is what the beginning of a season was like for you guys being on the road in, in Florida for a large part of the, the first month of the year. And, and it's not just exclusive to Michigan. I know when, you know, we, we talked with Jack Leggett over the years and he talked about his time at Maine and they, they were having to do the same thing. I mean, college baseball is just a, a, a weird sport because there are teams out there that live that month on the road, so to speak. I mean, what was that like for you during your 10 years at Michigan? Well, it's, it's, you're right. It's the norm for half the country to get on airplanes and go south and play in warm weather climates. But even the warm weather climate places are still colder uh, in February. I mean, when you start your season on Valentine's Day, it doesn't matter where you are except for maybe the South Florida or South Texas, I mean, you're going to be subjected to colder temperatures. But more importantly, it's basketball season. And all of the fans of all of these great institutions that are, that are passionate fans of their teams, like Clemson fans are, they're following basketball. And, you know, we just, I think more importantly, we need to get our sport out of the month of February and try to be able to start the college season in the month of March. Uh, at least for a couple of weeks, it'll cut down on the high costs and expenses of a lot of those northern schools. The point, uh, and it'll it'll give us a little bit of a separating line between basketball and baseball. Maybe not a totally definitive line, but it maybe a little bit more, and because we all know. I mean, Clemson fans know this as well, and and fans at at, at big time programs throughout the southeast know this. The the actual attendance during those early, early weekends, with the exception of the South Carolina series, it's just not as heavily attended as maybe uh, what they are when you have a big rivalry weekend or, or later in, in April and May. And so uh, I think it can be for the betterment of all of college baseball, just getting the start of the season out of the month of February. Uh, and it'll certainly bode well when some of those conferences are voting for big ticket issues like another paid assistant coach or when scholarships if they ever could be expanded uh, that would be helpful because everybody's improving their bottom line especially those northern teams that have high costs during the early part of the year eric back with us here for just a couple more minutes okay coach so you mentioned the staff i know yesterday the news came out uh nick schnabel did i did i say that correctly yeah great job all right. Yeah, people usually good. <laughs> uh, butcher that. But, yeah, Nick Schnabel, good job. So he's the assistant head coach and recruiting coordinator. Give us some insight into Nick real quick. And also, when do you expect to have the full staff piece together? Sure. Nick is uh, an extension of the Jack Leggett coaching tree as well, having played for Keith LeClaire at East Carolina. We are teammates at East Carolina together. We are both originally from California. Uh, played against each other in high school and junior college, but never wow. knew each other. And we didn't actually meet until we went on our recruiting visit to East Carolina, but, you know, became very close friends uh, and obviously stayed connected. He, he played professionally, making it up to AAA with the Expos uh, and then started his coaching career back at East Carolina and had stops along the way at Chipola Community College, at West Point, at Liberty back to East Carolina as the recruiting coordinator again. And we were able to convince him somehow to come, uh, come to the frozen tundra uh, for 10 <laughs> years. And he was absolutely instrumental uh, in, in helping build Michigan baseball and construct a roster. He's just got a recruiting acumen that is off the charts. He just knows what players are supposed to look like. He's an elite infield and hitting instructor uh, and just someone that, uh, was just as vital to building Michigan into uh, the program we were able to build it into uh, as anyone. So it was very important 
I knew he was going to have an opportunity to take over Michigan as the head coach. And so to be able to get him to come to Clemson and be the assistant head coach here was a huge get for our program. No question about it. Coach, always appreciate your time. Well, I guess technically in the future, we'll always appreciate your time. Glad you could join us today so that Tiger fans around the state can hear from you. And we look forward to chatting with you real soon. Best of luck to you guys. Hey, thanks a lot. And yeah, anytime. Look forward to connecting with you. Thank you. All right, so that was our interview with Clemson Tiger baseball coach Eric Backich. And actually, since that interview ended, Clemson announced that Jimmy Bellinger, the former pitching coach at Florida State, will be named the pitching coach at Clemson as well. You can read about that over on our website. Put the .com on it. Doggone it. ClemsonSportsTalk.com. And if you like this interview, you might like one of these that you see to my left or my right as we get out of here today. We'll talk to you soon. Take care.